Good morning, Jerry. How are you doing? Hey, doing great, Sean. You and RJ, good to be on this morning. Uh, and a happy new year to you. Jerry, uh, what was your assessment of the Cardinals game the other day? Well, I thought they, uh, the Cardinals were my story. I thought uh, uh, they played played us uh, about as uh, well as far as competing against what we do best. Uh, I thought they did a real good job uh, by virtue of really uh, making us contain their quarterback, having a contained mentality. They took a little of the stinger out of us relative to our our uh, uh, rush, if you will, our pressure, and um, uh, that uh, didn't work out. The quarterback had an outstanding game uh, on the uh, defensive side of the ball. Uh, their approach to the game was able to uh, take a little of the physicalness out of what we were doing or wanted to do with our blocking schemes, our protection schemes, and uh, I, to me that was the story. Uh, they were able to be more physical and, and uh, were able to uh, uh, prevail here. But uh, uh, it's not discouraging because it's a real blueprint uh, for us to prepare for should we meet them again here in the playoffs. Jerry, did Arizona do any we, – we keep saying is there a DAC blueprint – uh, and yesterday, I thought Mike McCarthy was had a very interesting press conference. He said, we're facing high scheme volume. It's a copycat league. There are trends that other teams are going to pick up on. W what are teams doing schematically against Dak that you're seeing more of recently? Well, it's multifaceted, but, uh, uh, you know, that's the game. That's, that's what you do. And uh, it's a, a chess match. Uh, and... Uh, more often than not, you don't get to play another team twice. And so uh, that uh, it's always been that way, that if you've played somebody once, then it's particularly challenging to play them again. And the reason is, is because you get to see how your personnel uh, matched up against theirs. That's obvious. And then you get to uh, see how your strategy uh, uh, panned out, which in our case we weren't uh, – uh, as satisfied as as uh, they were, they had uh, they had some good strategy and they executed it well. So, uh, uh, you know, I think when you say what uh, what is, we've got to block them up better. We got to protect better. They're multifaceted when they come to uh, how they'll be coming at you, whether it be in the passing game or what they're doing to us in the run game. We all know it's complementary. We hear that till we're. Uh, till we're blue in the face about complimentary football. Well, it it goes with setting up your offensive packages as you go out there and try to get some continuity and try to get some rhythm going. Uh, all of that is uh, uh, basically another way of saying uh, they were able to win the football game because they were more physical. They had the ball longer. Uh, we didn't get the benefit of the turnovers that we have gotten that mitigate some of what I'm talking about. We weren't able to get those. There were a couple of reasons why we didn't get one. Uh, one, we had the opportunity but didn't have the ability to, to get the call. So all of that uh, resulted in a loss that uh, uh, we, we're paying the price for it. Uh, we're going to uh, have some uh, adjustments uh, that we would have been made more in our favor probably. Uh, I, I'm still holding out for the possibility of a second uh, game should we earn it in the playoffs. If so, uh, none the worse for this. Jerry, uh, you know, Dak has been relatively inconsistent over the last several weeks, uh, including, you know, outside of the Washington game. Uh, has he become too conservative with uh, his, some of his throws? Well, I, I think that's uh, a really... Uh, let, let's go back to the, our, our game, the, the, uh, what we're doing in the NFL. Other teams have a way of influence in how your quarterback looks. Uh, I'm very pleased, very pleased uh, with what Dak has been doing. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, can appreciate uh, the challenges that we're facing from the defenses that we're playing. But in general... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to say not thrilled to death, I'm ecstatic that we've got him here with the health he's got, uh, with the season that he's got under his belt, uh, with where we are. 
I'm very uh, feel very good that we can uh, go into Philadelphia, uh, have us have a good game up there, and then turn around here and be in as good a shape to be in the playoffs as we've been in years. I like our depth. Uh, you've heard me say that, but uh, we certainly lost Gallup. Uh, we, we lost Gallup, which is a debt, but still, uh, we've uh, as we sit here today, we've got good depth. Uh, defensively, we're outstanding on our depth. We're outstanding on our participation that we we're going to be counting on on the defensive side of the ball, uh, uh, certainly the first playoff game and during the playoffs. So with all of that in mind, I wouldn't want to try to redeal this hand at all. Jerry Jones here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, Jerry, a lot of your guys were very vocal about the officiating after the Cardinals game. What did you think of some of the referee calls? Well, they were uh, the, the calls themselves uh, were at a bad time, and they stopped our possessions. They stopped our drives. They stopped us from getting our rhythm, if you will. Uh, and uh, those... Uh, uh, holding calls can do that now. They're the, to me, uh, they're one of the, if not the biggest drives uh, stopper or keep you from getting your feet under you and really getting something going. Uh, that they could be number one, and uh, it's a it's been a challenge for us. We've got to do better in the playoffs on our on our basic calls on uh, maintaining possession, keeping keeping our possession. Jerry, is there any concern that maybe the guys uh, are going to lack some accountability for how they played versus just blaming it on the referees or the officials for the loss? Not at all. Not at all. Each of those guys are sitting there. Every snap is a, is a, a, a state of mind. Uh, you're trying to do the very best job on that snap, trying to execute it and get your assignment right and then uh, uh, beat the guy in front of you get man so to speak as far as the offensive line is concerned get the get a man and uh, no there's none none in my mind I'm concerned about uh, uh, thinking uh, using calls as a crutch uh, against uh, executing and performance none at all do you think that the team needs to or are you a proponent of changing your style of play based on who the crew is that week no, I think we just need to go out and, and be who we are. And we've got, uh, again, uh, uh, this you, you really have so much you need to bring to the table when you get ready to play a team or when you're lined up against a team. Uh, basically reinventing yourself as far as uh, uh, the way you block or the physical way that you handle. And I'm looking at fronts now when I'm mentally thinking about what I'm saying. The fronts on both sides. No, I think you come with what got you there. Come with what you do best. You execute what you do best. Jerry, this is just like a league question. Like philosophically, from the league's perspective, what is the reason for not making the officials full time? Well, you just don't uh, have enough support uh, to uh, have uh, the. the, the conclusion that full time would remedy the issues that we don't have with our uh, that we're complaining about uh, there's nothing says a full time official will do better than the part time officials the quality of the people that you get with part time officials are outstanding they're outstanding these are some of the most accomplished people in professions or or if you will in the country there are and so uh, I've never been convinced, me personally, uh, that a, uh, a part-time uh, official that's uh, spending some of his time engineering would be better than a full-time official. Uh, there's, uh, we're talking about, about the 17 games, the playoffs, crews. No, nothing, nothing has convinced me that uh, there'd be that kind of advantage. Matter of fact, you might have less quality. Jerry Jones brought to you by Ford every Tuesday with Sean and RJ on 105 through the fan. Uh, Amari Cooper uh, comes uh, on this radio station once a week, and you know how intelligent he is in breaking things down. And after the Arizona game, he said uh, that we need to communicate more on offense. We, we need to talk more to figure out what we like to do, what we don't like to do. What, 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 do, you, what do you make of that comment, Jerry, and what Amari's trying to say? I think that uh, – uh, uh, when I look 
at what we do, the biggest thing I see is our the precision of the route running. Now, he's the best route runner in my mind. I would call him the best route runner in football. But that is not the same thing as running to the making the cut nine yards deep, making the cut X uh, distance away from the hash mark. We as a team need to be more crisp in, in our route running. And we're just talking about the route running. I can go down through every position with you. And so the kind of thing that we're talking about right there has to do with the individual receiver basically being precise on his route, on his cuts, when he makes his cut, how deep he goes before he changes direction, those kinds of things. And so uh, those are the kinds of things I think that uh, are stand out when I look at the tape. Jerry Jones joining us here on 105 Through the Fan. Where do you stand on, on you know, resting guys the final week uh, before a playoff game, that rest versus rust argument? I, I, I like to play. Uh, there's uh, obviously the two, uh, uh, two uh, uh, debate, the debate over the two ways to go is pretty obvious, but uh, I like to play. I think uh, in this particular case, we are going to have some uh, an extra day's rest between the playoff of our last game and the first playoff game. Uh, I think we're better served by going out there and executing and having our team out there uh, really playing like it's a, uh, the very playoff game that we're going to be playing the next week. How do you guys plan to approach it against the Eagles Saturday in terms of the starters? Well, we plan to play. We plan to play to win. Jerry, the, the news coming out is this big outbreak with the Eagles now with 12 guys put uh, on their COVID list. Uh, your thoughts on that, and does that affect any of your game prep or decision-making going in? No. Uh, because those guys could technically be back. Yeah. And uh, under our five-day rule, uh, if they uh, if their symptoms have diminished as they get toward the fifth day, they'll be able to come back. How do you think the five-day rule has worked out so far? Very good. Very good. I think it makes all the sense in the world, and uh, it basically uh, addresses uh, – uh, as best can, and we all know this is, we all know this, that uh, nobody really succinctly knows. Uh, but uh, I think it puts the, the, it's the best practical approach. We know that uh, when we're playing football out there that several uh, players have COVID that, that are on the field. We know that. Or, or have COVID. Are they spreading it? Are they uh, 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 doing the kinds of things that we work against? And uh, I like the way we approach it. It's a practical approach, uh, and it allows uh, you to probably be out there when you couldn't test uh, negative, but allows you to uh, play because your symptoms have diminished, which should be decreasing. Nobody knows now whether or not you can give it or not, but it should be de uh, decreasing the incidence of contagiousness. Jerry, I wanted to ask you about the kicking game. Uh, a lot of the fans, when you when you see them on social media uh, or call into the show, basically expect Greg to miss maybe about one kick a game. Uh, and I know the numbers show that if he made like one more kick, he'd be top twelve in in field goal percentage. Uh, but what do you say to the fans that are that are kind of worried come playoff time about him missing a big kick? I think the most important part of a kicker is consistency. Consistency. And it's not consistently missing. <laughs> yeah. Jerry Jones, every Tuesday, brought to you by Ford here on your home of America's team. Any New Year's resolutions, Jerry? Oh, I've got a bunch of them. It's my longest list of the year. <laughs> I had someone that I was surprised. As a matter of fact, I uh, was taken back a little when they were asked on uh, – uh, Bob Costa, uh, his opinion of me, because I'd spent a little time, not Bob's, but another interviewer, and he said he's the most flawed individual I've ever met. <laughs> and I was sitting with my wife, Jean, I said, well, what the hell did he mean by that? What does that mean? <laughs> and, and she said, well, I don't know. You tell me. 
<laughs> Boy, you don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> when do you uh, when do you think it's too late in the year to wish Happy New Year to somebody? My point is, and I forgot my point, but the point <laughs> is that I've got, as a flawed individual, I have a lot of items on my list to do better. <laughs> Jerry, thank you so much for the time. Have a safe trip uh, in Philadelphia, and we'll hear from you on Friday. Thanks, guys.